Welcome as we delve into another very interesting and possibly a little unnerving parenting chat. I think to set the premise here, it seems that more and more parents are undermining their children's teachers. This is a growing problem here in South Africa. And this morning, we're going to chat to our human potential and parenting expert, Nikki Bush, about handling parent-teacher meetings, and I suppose in a broader sense, that relationship. Because it's probably one of the most important in our children's lives. We are, after all, handing over our children to these teachers to play a significant role. I'm feeling a little bit anxious now. Maybe I've been doing this all along and I just haven't known. How are parents undermining their teachers? Graham, it's a, a growing problem. You know, I do a lot of work with teachers, a lot of work with schools. And what happened during the pandemic was quite interesting. Ah. The first sort of half of the first year of the pandemic, everyone went, yay, teachers are so awesome. We would never, we would never like to be teaching our children. We've now got them full time and what a big job and, you know, worship the teacher. And so the respect for teachers went up. It didn't live for long though. Mm. And now we have a pandemic of parental guilt and micromanagement and over control and parents walking into schools to have an altercation with a teacher because they don't agree with something, but they do it in front of the child. child. <laughs> and in that moment, they destroy the respect and the bond between the teacher and the child. And this is not good for your child, let alone the teacher. Yeah. Because raising children is a partnership between the teachers and you and the child. It's actually a, a three-legged stool, so to speak. And the minute you have destroyed that respect, it's impossible to build it again. You can't go back, rewind. <laughs> yeah. So the bottom line is that if you have a disagreement, you need to do it in private, out of earshot from the children. What is the impact of this on those children that are seeing this play out in front of them? Yeah, well, you've just used the word authority. Mm. We're not saying draconian authority, but when you've got a class of 25, 27, 35 kids... <laughs> Give it a try. <laughs> the teacher needs a modicum of authority, otherwise there will be chaos. Mm. And so we need to support the teachers to be able to cope with that number of children by getting on the page with them, by doing what they need us to do and ensuring that our children see us respecting that relationship. And that means boundaries. That means expecting your children to respect the teacher. If they've got a complaint and they come to you and they say, Mrs. So-and-so or Mr. So-and-so, listen. Don't prejudge, because there's one thing I have learnt about children, is they can behave very differently at school mm -hmm. to the way they behave at home. And so the transition from home to school is quite large. And don't think you 100% know how your children are behaving in the classroom. Well, they behave That's differently for different ask. parents, let uh, well, alone exactly, teachers and, you know, so... Exactly. I, I get that completely. I, and we're going to delve a little deeper into that, but when it comes to that moment specifically, how do we then approach the teacher? What is the best way to deal with this so that it doesn't create an issue moving forward between the teacher and child? Because it doesn't matter how amazing a teacher is, they're still going to be left with some emotional baggage after an altercation like that. So of course. how do we handle that situation in the right way? Well, first of all, book a time to see the teacher. Sure. After school, um, you know, whenever it is convenient for both of you, and do not take your child to the meeting. Mm. You need to go and see the teacher privately and, as I said earlier, out of earshot of the children. And, um, you know, that's respect. I really need to, you know, it, often it's, it's a WhatsApp that you'll send to the teacher or an email that you'll send, or you'll just pop into the classroom at the end of the day and say, can we make a time to meet? Do you go directly to the teacher? Do you go to the structures above them to facilitate that? What's kind of rocking the boat too much? Absolutely. So it really depends on what we're talking about. But for the most part, the rule of thumb is go to the source first. The source is the teacher. If you have no joy in that meeting and you can't come to some kind of agreement consensus, then you start then going you up the chain of command. But remember, if you start at the top and bring the, you know, powers to bear on a teacher, 
it may not be appropriate and then you've also destroyed your relationship of yeah. trust with the teacher so try with the teacher first yeah and also left that teacher on very shaky grounds Absolutely. in their own construct and they've still got to look after your child don't forget that we are going to continue this very interesting discussion with nikki in just a moment we're going to delve into that actual parent teacher meeting and how we can turn it into something productive in just a moment it's my feel good breakfast show Welcome back as we continue our very interesting chat with human potential and parenting expert Nikki Bush around supporting your child's bond with their teacher instead of undermining it. Let's talk about the parent-teacher meeting itself, which I think some parents dread, other parents love it. Um, but I think ultimately it's a purpose-driven occasion. You wanted to have a, a result at the end of the day and for this to feed into a positive outcome for your child, most importantly. So how do we turn these meetings into the most productive version that they can be? Absolutely, Graham. So, you know, at the end of every term, you usually have this parent-teacher meeting and it's a short meeting. That teacher has to get through 27 children in one week mm -hmm. with 27 parents, maybe times two. That's a lot of pressure and you usually have 10, maximum 15 minutes yeah. with that teacher. So be cognizant of the time constraints. Go prepared, make a list of questions that you have on your mind. What is the objective of this meeting? It's to discover more about who your child is when they're not with you, how they operate in the broader world. Mm. It's to find out how they're progressing because the teacher, remember, has a barometer. They are measuring your child against the norm of the class. So she'll be able to tell you how your child is faring or he will be able to tell you. So go with your list of questions, but also go with an open mind because we don't always know how our children are behaving in a classroom situation versus how they behave at home where they have more one-on-one -on -one attention and listen listen you are going to hear things that if you don't listen you will not hear and you will have missed the moment golden opportunity by all means ask your questions but go and listen first and then delve for the answers or share this is the other thing. You need to share with teachers what's going on at home. Give them perspective. Sure. Maybe there's been granny who has a long-term illness and she's just passed away. Maybe the puppy has just died, which I'm sure the teacher would have found out about yeah. from the child. Maybe you have a new sibling entering the family circle, taking the attention of this child, and the teacher might be saying, well, actually, your child's being a bully at the moment. Yeah. Well, actually, now we understand because the context is at home they're getting less attention, so they're playing up Pushing for attention at school. Mm -hmm. Remember that we're actually working in partnership with that teacher in the best interests of your child. And it's not there to go grand, grind an axe. It's not an opportunity. I've, I've learned the term confirmation bias fairly recently, <laughs> and it's amazing how much of humanity plays out in this space. So don't go in there looking to prove a negative point. If you've got beef with that teacher, this is not the space. It's about your child. That being said, can we round this off with maybe one or two tips on the best way to support your teacher then? What do they need from you in the, the kind of day-to-day -day routine to support the work yeah. that they're doing? So firstly, ask the teacher in that meeting, is there anything I can do mm. to help my child? Because they often have exercises and games that you can play with your children to reinforce some of the learning where maybe your child is behind. And then make sure that you're part of the PTA or you volunteer to be a class mum or a class dad involved, in yeah. your situation. Get involved. Make sure you help your child to pack what they need to pack every day because there's nothing worse for a teacher than saying, take out your books or your crayons or your <laughs> pens and your child hasn't got them. So just do your part and it's going to make everything easier for everybody, including your child. The part in a partnership. Absolutely love it. Nikki, thank you so much. I think it's going to take me a couple of days to process all of this. I'm going to just apologise, blanket apology to all the teachers out there who have been through the most because of us crazy, ridiculous parents. We love and appreciate you. And to those crazy parents out there, please do this right now. If you haven't already, read Nikki's book, Future Proof Your Child for the 2020s and Beyond. For more on the role of a school in your child's life, the world is changing dramatically. Future Proof Yourself. Get it now at Nikki Bush. 
bush.com and then of course continue that conversation with Nikki on her closed Facebook group called Parenting Matters where you can actually pose your questions directly to her. It's an opportunity that I suggest you grasp, especially if you're battling with something hectic right now. She's there for you. Do it.